seats. Welcome, good morning. Thank you for joining us online in the room. It's great to be in God's house this morning. The scripture says in John chapter 12, Jesus said himself in red letters, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men unto me. So this morning, of course, he's talking about his death on the cross, but also he's talking about lifting up the name of Jesus Christ. So let's lift up our Jesus and praise and honor this morning. Will you stand with me as we worship him? Jesus, Lord, we thank you. God, we exalt. Lord, you are high and lifted up. Open wide your gates and be lifted up the doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. Open wide your gates and be lifted up the doors. Open wide your gates and be lifted up the doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. Open wide your gates and be lifted up the doors. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw men unto me. Lift Jesus higher, lift Jesus higher, lift him up for the world to see. He said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. Open wide your gates and be lifted up your doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. Open wide your gates and be lifted up your doors. Open wide your gates and be lifted up your doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord of hosts. Open wide your gates and be lifted up your doors. Who is this King of glory? He is the Lord of all. Open wide ye gates and be lifted up ye doors. Lord, we open our mouths, give your praise. We worship you, our God. Thank you, Jesus. We exalt the We lift our hands in the sanctuary. We lift our hands to give you the glory. We lift our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Hallelujah in the sanctuary. Hallelujah, we give you the glory. Hallelujah, we give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel, we lift up your name. Heavenly Father, coming Messiah. We will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. We sing our song in the sanctuary. 
We sing our song to give you the glory. We sing our song to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Clap your hands in the sanctuary. We clap our hands to give you the glory. We clap our hands to give you the praise. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Jesus, we give you the praise. Emmanuel, we lift up your name. Heavenly Father, coming Messiah. And we will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Yes, we will praise you for the rest of our days. We will praise you for the rest of our days. Thank you, Lord. We lift you up, Jesus. Oh, we exalt. We exalt you, Lord. Thank you, thank you. see Jesus lifted high, banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see. We want to see Jesus lift in high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift in high. Church, it's time to move forward. Don't turn back, turn to the cross. Fix your eyes on Jesus. Follow his word, his truth, his life. We want to see Jesus lift in high. Banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Banner that flies across this land, that all men might see the truth and know He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift in high. Oh, we want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift in high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lift in high. We lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up higher and higher, oh, we lift you up, we lift you up, we lift you up higher and higher, oh, we lift you up, say yeah, we lift you up. We lift you up, we lift you up, 
We lift you up higher and higher, Lord. We lift you up. We lift you up. We lift you up up higher and higher. We want to see Jesus lifted high. Banner that flies across this land. That all men might see.
right now we're just going to invite the Holy Spirit to come where you're at. Just bow your head in prayer. We're going to fervently pray for His Spirit to come. That would speak to us, convict us, come to us and mold us, shape us, do what the Spirit does, teach us and guide us into all truth. Let's invite Him right now that He would speak to us this morning. Let's lift our voices in prayer. Lord Jesus, God, we call on you this morning. Let's lift up Jesus. This song is a very powerful, militant song. So as people in his army, let's sing this with authority and power. All hail the
someone to just lift up their voice in prayer and closing the worship just asking Jesus to do what he said like in the scriptures if he be lifted up he will draw all men just somebody lift up your voice in prayer this morning this morning. Good morning, good morning. Good to be in God's house this morning. Thank you, uh, Jesus. We thank you. We already had a prayer, so we'll get right into the message this morning. Uh, she, there's some handouts so you guys can follow along. I find it helpful. Uh, it's the side that has the highlights on it, not the other side. It's good to be in God's house. We're going to get into the Word. We're going to look at some examples of, of Jesus' draw, what draws people to Christ, and can you dr- be drawn away from Christ? Um, I'm going to be using part of this to uh, make a video just about the gospel, and I'd like to uh, advertise it out to uh, our, our city, so at one point I'm just going to be very uh, statement-oriented, not looking for feedback, just mm-hmm. it's, a, it's for the recording. We're going to start out with our example in Mark chapter 5, verse 24, a certain woman had a flow of blood, as well, you guys know this story, for 12 years, and had suffered many things for, from many physicians. She spent all that she had and was no better, but grew worse. But when she heard about Jesus, she came behind him in the crowd and touched his garment. She said, if only I may touch his clothes, I shall be made 
well. And so the question is, what did she hear? And that would have been interesting to know. I mean, back then, people didn't just come by and they're busy and they're, you know, hey, did you hear about Jesus? He's healing. See you later. It could have been an hour-long conversation, two-hour-long conversation where he's either explaining uh, the words that he spoke and sharing about all the things that he'd done. Uh, but I, I would think that she may have heard the gospel from somebody. So that's what we want to begin with, the gospel. Lord Jesus, we come before you this morning. We pray that your people, Lord, would be, that you would give us authority, Lord, that we would speak your word with authority. God, that we realize that, Lord, it's, it's your word, it's not our words. Jesus, in your word, is higher than your name. Your word is powerful. Jesus, I pray right now, Lord, give us authority in speaking your word. The gospel of Jesus Christ begins with John the Baptist. In Mark chapter 1 verse 4, John came baptizing in the wilderness and preaching a baptism of repentance for the remission, the release, the liberty from sin. In Luke chapter 3 verse 8, John goes on and says, Therefore bear fruits worthy of repentance. Repentance is just changing your behavior, changing your mind, which is very hard to do in America today and all over the world. It's hard for people to change their mind from approving and accepting your sin to turning from and making the steps necessary to be delivered from your sin. If it's some kind of... uh, drugs or or, uh, addiction, you have to make the steps to be delivered from that. But you have to start changing your behavior and changing your mind. Jesus Christ wants to deliver us, save us, and cleanse us from our sin. In James chapter 4, 8, James reminds us to draw near to God and He will draw near to you. The act of repentance is an act of drawing near to God. Repenting is an act of drawing near to God. After Jesus was tempted in the desert by Satan and John the Baptist was put in prison, it says in Matthew 4, 17, Jesus Christ himself began to preach and to say, Repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. Jesus confirms what John said, that we need to repent. He also mentions that the kingdom of God is at hand. In Luke chapter 10, verse 11, Jesus explains. Don't worry, I can cut out any audio gap. All of this I'm saying now, I can cut it right out. I can merge it right with the next line. Don't worry. Luke chapter 10, verse 11. Jesus explains, The kingdom of God has come near you. In chapter... You don't have to fly somewhere. You don't have to be of a certain race or anything else like that. You can be living in a tragic situation, a good situation, a mediocre situation. Whatever your situation is, the kingdom of God is available to you. It's at hand. It's near you. In Luke chapter 17, verse 21, in Luke chapter 17, verse 21, Jesus says, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. It's not something you can find at the store. It's not something you can travel to see. He says the kingdom of God is within you. In Romans chapter 14, 17, the kingdom of God is not eating or drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. And lastly, Matthew 3, 11, Jesus, John says about Jesus, He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and Father and fire. In Matthew 3, 11, 
John reminds us that Jesus Christ will baptize us with the Holy Spirit and fire. In Luke chapter 12, verse 5, Jesus said, Fear him who has the power to cast into hell. I, yes, I say to you, fear him. Jesus Christ will judge the world. In Acts 17, 30, the writer says, Truly these times of ignorance over, God overlooked. I'm sorry, I've got to restart that. In Acts chapter 17, verse 30, it says, Truly these times of ignorance God overlooked, but now commands all men everywhere to repent, because He has appointed a day on which He will judge the world in righteousness by the man Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is going to judge the whole world. So, and so, do we care if Christ is offended by our sins? Do we care about pleasing and honoring Jesus Christ? Are we willing to repent by changing our minds and our sinful behaviors? I submit to you today, it is time for us to repent from our wicked ways. It is time for us to humble ourselves in prayer to God. It is time for us to follow the key to eternal life, that is Jesus Christ. Yeah, sorry, I didn't put any of the slides up. All right, so I'm done with that. In John, Matthew chapter four twenty three, Jesus. Was, went about all Galilee teaching in their synagogues, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, and healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. And this scripture, I'm bringing this up because he's, he's doing three things here that, I mean, it's almost like a, a template or a layout, teaching in the synagogues. Now, we're here in church and this, you know, synagogue is like the church. He's teaching, and his teachings should be taught in the churches, right? His teachings. And he's preaching the gospel of the kingdom, the, king, the gospel of what I just said a few minutes ago. He's going out and he's preaching it to the world. So you have one, now two things, right? He's preaching to the world, and he's teaching in the church, and lastly, he's healing all kinds of sickness and all kinds of disease among the people. And see, that's, what, that's where we need God's sovereign hand, right? But these three things he did. And it says in the next verse, His fame went throughout all Syria, and they brought to him the sick people who were afflicted, with diseases and torments. They were demon-possessed, epileptics and paralytics, and he healed them. And today, we have a lot of people that have all kinds of mental sicknesses, all kinds of problems in their mind. We have a lot of uh, medicine and treatment for bodily, physical things, but the mind still has not been uh, an area where people in America overcome their mind uh, issues in their mind, their mental problems. So God can heal that. Five, Matthew chapter 5, verse 1. Seeing the multitudes, he went up on a mountain, and he was seated. When he, when he was seated, his disciples came to him. Then he opened his mouth, and he taught them. And I'm bringing all this up because it is a great reminder that Jesus taught, he preached, and he healed. His teachings were important. Everything that he did was important. It's not just the healings. It's not just the, you know, it was the full package. I mean, his teachings are very important. His word is very important. His preaching is very important. And he backed it up with all of the healings that he did. That's the way he did it. <laughs> Sorry. I'm not paying attention to the slides. So going back to the woman, she had a flow of blood for 12 years. When she heard about Jesus, she came behind, as we know, and touched his garment and was healed. And Jesus said, your faith has made you well. 
Go in peace and be healed of your affliction. What faith did she have? First of all, she was drawn to Jesus by what she had, what? Heard. She heard about Jesus and she was drawn to Jesus. And this is very important. People need to hear Jesus' words and then let them be drawn by Jesus himself. And it is their responsibility, it is their choice, I'm sorry, of whether or not they are going to reject or accept Jesus' drawing, his pulling, his whatever. I, I, I've been trying to find the right word, but you know, this drawing, there's a better word. He's like a magnet. And he's trying to pull you in. A powerful, powerful magnet. But I've seen it many times, and I'll get to those examples later, where young people have completely shut God off. Jesus is drawing them, and they just... Alright, I need to get rid of this paper. She was healed. She over so Jesus says to her, Your faith has made you well. What does he mean by that? Why is that important? What faith? She and this is important because we have this idea of faith that it's all up here. But Jesus is saying her action of getting up as a sick woman, right? She grew worse and worse. She was sickly in her house, but she was drawn and she responded to that drawing by getting up out of her house, walking, searching, and seeking to find Jesus Christ. That is the faith that he's talking about. And when you hear about faith, you ask yourselves, well, what actions back that up? She had to overcome the crowd as a weak, sickly woman. But she came to Jesus no matter what obstacles were in her way. we got to stop giving God excuses. And sinful people, they try to come up with excuses that maybe it's, oh, people are too judgmental, people are too mean. Well, listen, if you hear... Jesus' plain, simple words, repent. And you hear more of his plain, simple words, and you reject that. That is your choice. It's not because some Christian or some church was mean. You rejected Jesus. That is the fundamental, that is what it boils down to. Because these people and these examples overcame all the obstacles because they were responding to the drawing of Jesus Christ. So that's not an excuse. You can say it, you can act like it hurt, you know, people kept me from Jesus. No, His drawing is so powerful that when... When you run into those people, you just like, get out of the way. I'm not drawn to you, I'm drawn to Christ. Luke chapter 7, verse 36. A woman in the city who was a sinner, she knew that Jesus sat at the table in the Pharisee's house. She brought an alabaster alabaster flask of oil. She stood at his feet behind him, weeping, and began to wash her his feet with her tears and wiped them with the hair of her head. She kissed his feet and anointed them with the fragrant oil. And then he said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. And so again, Jesus here has drawn this woman. This woman had heard that he would be in this house. Right? And she's also hearing that Jesus Christ has a gospel and has heard his message and she's heard, she's heard the things that are convicting her. 
And so there's this drawing, there's this magnet. She's thinking to herself, what can I do? How can I, I know I'm a sinner. Everybody knows I'm a sinner. What can I do? What pleading, what can I do before this, this man that I've heard about? And Jesus starts to draw her and draw her and pull her. And she just says, I'm going to go and humble myself in, in this way, in this manner, however I can do it. And that was her faith in action. She was drawn to Christ. Jesus said, your faith has saved you. What faith? She got up. She faced the ridicule. The Pharisees knew she was a sinner, and they would talk down to her. They would speak condescending to her. But like I said before, the drawing of Jesus Christ is so powerful that she didn't care about those men. She went to Jesus himself. And that's very important. Zacchaeus, another example in Luke chapter 19, verse 1. He was a chief tax collector. He was rich. And he sought to see Jesus, who Jesus was. He wanted to know he had heard about things too. And you can see here, he sought to see who Jesus was. He heard again, the, he heard about him. And so Jesus starts to draw him. Jesus, remember, he can see what Zacchaeus is doing. He can see what, you know, he saw him in the tree before Jesus even got there. Jesus knew where he was. He's drawing him. Of course, he climbed up into the tree because he was short. There was a crowd Jesus was going to pass by that way. He put him, himself in Jesus' path. And when Jesus came to the place, he calls out to Zacchaeus and he says, Make haste, come down, for today I must stay at your house. So he made haste and came down and received him joyfully. See, this is the key, that we respond to Christ's drawing. That we respond to him when he is calling his call, his pull, are you responding to that? And Christians and unbelievers, whoever you are, God is drawing us. God is drawing the world. And he, they, but they've got to hear the Word of God. They've got to hear so that they can be drawn. They've got, they got to have something to be drawn to, right? They can't just be drawn for nothing. I mean, sure, Jesus can do that, but he wants his church, right? He says, go into all the world and teach them, make disciples and teach them all that I've commanded you. And he sent out his disciples to go and share the gospel of the kingdom. So responding to Christ is very important. And again here, he had obstacles. He was short. He had a physical obstacle. Uh, there was a crowd in his way. And again, they said, these people said about him, he has gone to be a guest with a man who is a sinner. This is the crowd talking. Why is he going with Zacchaeus? He's a sinner. He stole my money. <laughs> And Zacchaeus could have said, oh, the church is mean to me. I'm not going to follow Christ. No. Jesus was drawing him. Jesus was there. He didn't care about what they said. He responded to Christ. So unbelievers, believers, Christians, non-Christians, unlearn, learn, whoever you are, you have a responsibility to respond to the drawing of Jesus Christ. When you hear his word, you have a responsibility and a choice. The choice is yours. Don't blame anyone else. There's always going to be somebody that says something that rubs you the wrong way. But Jesus' draw and his power, his presence, his word is more attractive than all of that stuff. All of the obstacles that may come. 
Zacchaeus said, look, I give half of my goods to the poor. If I've taken anything from anyone by false accusation, I restore fourfold. Today, Jesus said, salvation has come to this house. Why? Because Zacchaeus changed. Zacchaeus turned and repented from his bad behavior. At Carbon Canyon Church, we used to pray before youth service. I remember a young man came in, young boy, and uh, you know normally he wouldn't come to something like that, but I think he may have gotten in trouble at school or something. And so he came into the prayer time, and we were in a circle, and we start praying. And all of a sudden, he starts to move like this, you know, and I'm holding his hand, and we're praying, and he's like, like this, and. Uh, I look at him and I can see what's going on. Jesus is doing something. The draw and the pull and the presence is something he wasn't expecting. And because these guys think, oh, you can't cry, you can't show emotion, he's trying to hold back his emotion. He's trying to put, you know, not let Jesus in. And uh, if you've never experienced the presence of God and the pull and the draw, it's different. And so he rejected Christ. He was there, he felt the drawing, the pulling, but he didn't want it. And that's what people are doing today. You see, we have a choice of whether or not we're going to respond to his drawing. I remember another young man, we were up, at, uh, up in the snow, and we were all worshiping. He started to feel God's presence and Jesus drawing him, and he started to cry and weep, and he's, you know, he's like, what is this? I've never experienced this before. And uh, you know, he, he responded to it. It was good. Uh, it affected him in a good way, but you, know, you get back to reality, and things change. Uh, pretty soon, you're like, oh, that's just, that's, that's nothing I need to pursue. I got my own things that I'm doing. And that's how, we, that's how it can happen too. You accept it. And this is like the, the seed that Jesus brings up, right? The parable of the seed. You have the people that accept it at the beginning, but the cares of this world choke it and they're gone. You have people that are hard and they don't want it, so they won't accept it. So what I'm trying to get at is that Jesus Christ is drawing. He, we've got to share. People need to hear his word so that, they, that Jesus can use something to draw them with. And it is their responsibility to respond. It's our responsibility to share his word so people can hear. And it's their responsibility to accept or reject Christ. Their choice, I should say. John chapter 6, verse 43. No one comes to me unless the Father who sent me draws him. There he says it. So his drawing is very important. Jesus Christ, uh, I remember as even a teenager being drawn to Christ. I remember the continual drawing. You know, like James said, you draw near to him and he draws near to you. If you keep that up, you're going to keep getting closer and closer to Christ. But if you do not draw near to Christ and you start turning away, you know, it's kind of like you step back, he's stepping back. What are we doing here? You're stepping back? I'm stepping back? You don't want me? Okay, okay, I'm stepping back. Jesus isn't going to force himself. He's a gentleman. If you draw near to him, he's coming. He's like, hey, he's coming in for a handshake. You step back, he's like, oh, okay, I guess I'll see you later. Draw near to God, and he will draw near to you. John chapter 12, 30. Jesus answered, and he said, if I am lifted up from the earth, he will draw all people, I will draw all peoples to myself. And this he said, signifying by what death he would die. So he's saying, this, this word lifted up, 
He's talking about being lifted up on the cross. And as we know, after he died on the cross, he, he is drawing people to himself. But the word also means to raise to a condition of honor and dignity. So if we, when we lift up Jesus, we're raising him to a position of honor and dignity. That is important as well. The church today, we need to be lifting up Jesus Christ. We need to be lifting him up honorable. We need to be living a life that is honorable to Jesus Christ. We need, we need to say things that are honorable of Jesus Christ. Um, Acts chapter 20, verse 28. Therefore take heed to yourselves, to all the flock. For I know this, savage wolves among and among yourselves men will rise up speaking perverse things to draw away the disciples after themselves. And so I'm bringing this up because, you know, Jesus isn't the only one drawing people, right? You have the world, you have... Uh, here it says, people in the church, among yourselves, there's wolves, there's people that are trying to get something out of God's people. They're, they're not there, they're, they're deceiving people. And so people are trying to draw away God's disciples after who? Themselves. And we've got to remember, we got, we've got to point people to who? To Christ. Paul said, imitate me as I follow Christ. And so, as Christians, you've got to be careful. And he gives the solution here, Paul, or actually the writer of in Acts, which is Luke. Therefore, watch and remember that for three years I did not cease to warn you, everyone, night and day, with tears. Watch and remember. And if we go to the scriptures, we know what watching is. Matthew chapter 26, 38. Wait here and watch with me. And of course, they didn't. They fell asleep. Uh, and he said, What? Why? Could you not watch with me for one hour? And Jesus says, Watch and pray, lest you enter into temptation. The Spirit is Willing, but the flesh is weak. So, as individual Christians, you have a responsibility to pray. You have a responsibility to watch. And what does watch mean? In Ezekiel chapter 3, verse 16, it's very clear here. I have made you a watchman for the house of Israel. Therefore, hear a word from my mouth and give them warning from me. We have a responsibility to warn. When I say to the wicked, you shall surely die, that is a warning from God. To the wicked, and you give them no warning, nor speak to warn the wicked for, from his way, that his blood will be required at your hand. So this is what he's talking about when he says watch. Be on the lookout, and also warn. We are watchmen, we have to warn the people of our city, we have to warn the people in our church and Christians that we know that repent of Christ's words, Christ's teachings, what he says. You know, you can't just pull scriptures out and follow that. You've got to follow the whole thing. And Jesus preached repentance. Jesus preached uh, turning from sin. He preached the Holy Spirit and he preached about a hell. There's going to be a punishment and a judgment. We've got to turn from those things. So we have a responsibility as Christians to watch and pray. Jesus Christ is drawing people to himself, but they need to hear the word. Other people are drawing people away from Christ. And we see that in our country today. In America, people are drawn away by bribery, by uh, promises for certain things, whatever it is, to draw away from right, to draw away from Christ. It's not just 
idolatry, it's also they're drawn to sin. They're drawn to do what is wrong. Genesis chapter 49, verse 10. The scepter shall not depart from Judah, nor a lawgiver from between his feet. And unto him shall the gathering of the people be. Jesus Christ is drawing people to himself through his word. Unto him shall the gathering of the people be. It's going to be to him. We've got to remember that. As my guitar player comes... We want to take a few minutes here to pray. We're also going to have communion. If my communion man can pass out communion, that would be great. And so God has questions for us. Are we willing to respond to the pull, the the drawing of Jesus Christ? Are we willing to repent and turn from our sin? Are we willing to lift up Jesus in honor so that He can draw the whole world to Himself? As Christians, are we willing to keep watch by warning people of the payment for their sin? And we do not have any excuses. The unbeliever does not have any excuses. The Christians do not have any excuses. When Jesus draws His people, when Jesus draws sinners to Himself and His church to Himself, we have a responsibility and a choice of whether or not we are going to respond to that. So wherever you go, wherever you're going to be, you've got to remember Jesus Christ has given us a responsibility. And that is to be watchmen, to warn. Wherever you're living, We need to watch. We need to lift up Jesus with your life. Lift Him up in honor. Show people how to repent and turn from sin. Show people how to lift up Christ. We're going to take some time here to take communion. Right now I'd like to invite you to stand as we... Take up communion. The scriptures say in 1 Corinthians 11, 26, Whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until He comes. So this communion is telling the world that Jesus died on the cross because this is the, the, the cup, this is the bread, this is Christ, gave His life, for the world. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 24, he said, Take, eat, this is my body which was broken for you. They beat him. They whipped him. Do this in remembrance of me. When, Paul, when Saul was persecuting the church, Jesus said to Saul, Why are you persecuting me? In Romans chapter 12, verse 5, we are one body in Christ and individually members of one another. Jesus Christ gave His life for the church. He is the church. And this bread represents that. So let's take it together. And I'm going to invite someone to pray. Mr. Tavis, would you please pray for the bread this morning before we take it together? Thank you, Jesus. Let's take the bread together. And he says, this covenant is the, this cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me and you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Scriptures say that we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. 
And we can go to Him when we sin. Jesus Christ died for the church, not just for sinners, but the church too. We can come to Him when we sin, and He will forgive us of our sins. So, as before we take this cup, would somebody lift up their voice in prayer? Um, and pray for the cup this morning. Lord Jesus, we thank you for your blood that was shed on the cross for our sin. Lord God, we're reminded, Jesus, that even though we've accepted you, Lord, you still love your church. And Lord, you give us your blood to cleanse us from sin, even your church, Jesus. And Lord, even though we've messed up, made mistakes, Lord, you will forgive us and cleanse us. And we thank you. We ask you bless this cup in your precious name. Let's take the cup together. <clears throat> Never let me go. could take your place to feel the warmth of your embrace help me find a way bring me back to you you're all I want Like this uh, song says, it's a responding to Him. It's a, it's a prayer saying that I want You, Jesus. Bring me back to You. Draw me back to You. Draw me closer to You. This prayer. Right now, we're just going to lift up our voices in prayer that we would respond to Him wholeheartedly during the week, not just today, but during the week in our own lives where we're not at church, that we respond to Him on a daily basis. Respond to Him by coming to Him, drawing close to Him in His Word, drawing close to Him in prayer. Let's lift up our voices right now and just commit and surrender unto Him this morning. Lord Jesus, we come before You, God. Lord, in prayer, God, Lord, we commit ourselves to You. Jesus, Jesus, You're all we want. God, oh God, You're the top priority. You're the greatest thing, Jesus. God, Lord, we pray, Lord Jesus. Lord, draw us back to you with such a, a great drawing, Lord. Draw us back to you with a, Lord, with your, your presence, your power, Lord, whatever it is that you use, Jesus. Lord God, Lord, like James said, we're going to draw closer to you. Jesus, Jesus, please. Lord, we pray, draw us closer to you. Lord, you're all we want. We thank you, Jesus. Let's sing that unto him. You're all I want. You're all I've ever needed. You're all I want. Help me know you are near. Now, I don't want to just pray as a formality right now. We got to pray for the people out there. When they hear the message of repentance, when they hear the message of the gospel of Jesus Christ, 
we got to pray that that drawing is so strong that there is nothing that is going to keep them from responding to it. And we want to pray that his drawing and his pulling and his mac, whatever it is that he does, that is so powerful. We want that for our city. We want that for our city. Let's pray and lift up the, our, our city that God would just move powerfully with his word and work with his word to draw them in. Let's lift up our voices seriously. Jesus, God, we call on you. Lord Jesus, we pray. God, we pray for the people of Lake Elsinore, God. Lord Jesus, that you would come and draw them unto yourself. Jesus, Lord, when they hear about Jesus, God, Lord, they would be like Zacchaeus. They would be like the woman with the issue of blood. Lord, they would be like the woman who was a sinner. God, Lord, that they would turn, go out from where they are, and be drawn to you, Jesus. Jesus, that they would be re respond, Lord, like this woman and that man did. Jesus, Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords, come. Lord, in our day, in our city, draw people to you, God. Draw people, Lord, from out of the world to yourself. Lord, unto you shall the gathering of the people be. God, Lord, not to a man, Lord Jesus, but to the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Jesus, draw people unto yourself, God. Lord, leave them with no excuse, Jesus. Lord Jesus, leave them with no excuse, God. Lord, put an extra pull on them today. Lord, put an extra pull on them, Lord. Jesus, 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 please. Lord, we pray. Lord, for your sovereign hand in our community, Jesus. this morning we want to ask for a new heart a watchman's heart that cares about the people cares about unbelievers cares about Christians willing to warn people share that simple words of Christ and invite people to Jesus Christ Let's pray and ask God for a new heart, a watchman's heart, willing to say the things that Jesus said. Let's lift up our voices. God, we ask this morning, God, we pray for our church. Lord, that we would, Lord, warn people. Lord, we would be willing to speak your truth. Lord, and warn people of the judgment to come. Jesus, Jesus, King of kings, Lord of lords. God, we pray for a new heart in us, Lord, one that cares, Lord, about, the, about heaven and cares about your kingdom, God. Lord, not just about ourselves, Lord, not just about our, our physical needs, Lord Jesus. Lord, we have all that and we have got to solve those problems, but Lord, we need to put a priority on what you want for your kingdom, God. Lord, we pray that you equip us and give us the tools. Lord, we pray for a simple method, God, Lord, that all of us 
can use and operate. Jesus, Jesus, please. Lord, we ask this in your name, God. Lord, change our hearts. Lord, make us bold, Lord, for your gospel. Make us bold for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus, 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 please. Lord, we thank you this morning. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Those online, we want to thank you for joining us. We trust that you are going to be willing to repent and turn from your sin. We trust that you are going to be, if you're a Christian, willing to warn and be a watch, be on watch for the kingdom of God. We trust that you are going to follow Christ wholeheartedly. We trust that you're going to lift up Jesus in honor with your life. Thank you for, again for joining us. God bless you. Have a great day.